Hello everyone, this is Nick with Nick Does TGI and welcome to my channel. Before we begin, I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving this year. I'll be taking the next few days off to spend with spend time with family, but expect a new video this weekend. In today's video, I'll be going over the general performance of the DGI portfolio, discuss my long-term goals with DGI investing, and also talk about my why or inspiration for investing. And then I'll go over my M1 finance portfolio uh, performance, cash, with cash positions, M1+, plus, etc. I will be going over how I plan to make over $5,000 a month in passive income from the Nick Does DGI portfolio. But first, we must discuss my why. The reason why I just encourage everyone to save, invest in stocks, real estate, and learn more about personal finance is very simple. It's because our country's education system fails to teach financial literacy. And as a result, many Americans are in debt and unable to achieve their full financial pot potential. Now, what do I mean? Um, this article by Kiplinger, most Americans think they know about money than they do. While majority of Americans believe they are financially literate, tasks like interest rate, and inflation calculations are beyond many of us. Now, how did they um, come up with this result? So FINRA, which is a government uh, agency, they put out a five question survey on fundamental top concepts of economics and personal finance, um, just five questions in, in 2009. Still only 42% 42, 42 of respondents were able to answer four or more, so 80% correct. Um, but nine years later, by 2018, this percentage dropped eight percentage points to 34%. That basically means only a third of adults could understand three basic financial literacy topics by age 40. To me, that, that just seems you know absolutely crazy. Um, and here you can see how not, not having the full financial literacy can really hurt you um, over over. 40% of Americans would struggle to come up with a $400 for an unexpected expense. And, you know, that expense can, can, can be like an any, any day occurrence, whether, you know, your, your pet getting sick and having to go to the vet or, you know, your kid falling down and so you need to go to the urgent care or, you know, your, your tire, car tire pops. So you have to go to the shop last minute or, or what have you, you know, these things can happen on any day, literally. And, you know, and the reason why is, you know, Americans are living pay to, paycheck to paycheck and they're in so much debt. Um, if you look here, you know, we have the average American debt by age or generation. And, you know, Americans are starting starting to accumulate debt as soon as they turn legal adults at 18, you know, Gen Z. Um, they're already almost at ten thousand dollars in debt, whether that's you know student loans, card, credit card, medical expense, and just a bunch of other uh, financing debt that you know that they probably don't need at this at this point. Um, millennials, which I am a part of, you know, were on average seventy eight thousand dollars in debt, uh, and then as soon as you enter the age where you start to also accumulate, you know, mortgage debt, you know, your average debt goes up and your the average debt peaks when you're in the 40 to 55 age range. And it slightly, slightly gets better, but still, um, for me, I personally plan to be debt-free by the time I'm 50. So for my investing, how do I ensure that my dividend portfolio um, reaches five thousand dollar a month in passive monthly income well by investing in a combination of stable high quality high medium and low yielding dividend growth stocks and investing each month with a five thousand dollar monthly dividend income at about a 3.5 percent dividend yield 
we are looking at a portfolio size of 1.6 to 1.7 million. Investing is only part of the process through our multiple sources of income. We, my wife and I, plan to budget, save, and then invest into this portfolio in, in order to reach that seven figure. It won't be easy, but we're so excited to document the journey. I categorized 30 of my 31 holdings into a low, medium, and high yielding dividend stock uh, sheet. And currently, D DIS Disney is an exception because they suspended their dividend earlier this year um, due to the virus. But, you know, because of the, their parks, their cruise lines, and many of their other um, operations are are restricted or heavily restricted. I have no doubt that when everything opens up, hopefully next year, um, they will reinstate their dividend in, uh, I would say, less than 12 to 18 months. Nonetheless, you know, my current portfolio yields around 3%. So eventually I hope to aim for 3.5 to 4% um, with overall annual dividend increases of 6 to 8%. So, and as you can see, you know, this little chart with all the logos kind of makes it very clear that you know, I do hold a combination of you know high yielding, which is over 4%, uh, medium yield, which I would consider between 2 to 4% dividend yield, and low yield, uh, less than 2%. Um, it's a, I think it's a healthy balance. Um, some of the high yielding stocks, you have a lot of the REITs or you have AT&T or what have you, and they don't really grow their dividend you know, too crazily every year, you know, it usually keeps up with inflation, which is about 2% or slightly above, but, you know, they are starting off at a higher yield. Um, in the medium yield, you know, they are yielding 2 to 4%, but some of them are growing their dividends, um, you know, 4, 5, 6% or more. Um, and then under the low yielding, you know, they are starting off at a really low yield, um, for example, I think Lowe's is about a 1.5% yield, but you know some of these companies have increased, have been increasing their dividend annually over 10% a year. And to showcase a handful of my portfolio of holdings, a couple out of here, uh, I just want to go over five Swan, aka Sleep Well at Night companies that will help me achieve my ultimate goal of earning $5,000 a month in passive income. So here's my M1 um, finance portfolio. Um, I am filming, filming this you know, pre-market on Wednesday, uh, November 25th. And yesterday was an absolute tear on the market. Um, yeah, the Dow hit 30,000 as um, we saw more news coming from you know, Washington, D.C., the GSA, which is one of the federal government agencies formally recognized um, the transition into Biden's administration. We This week we saw three consecutive weeks of very positive uh, CV uh, vaccine shot news. And, and, and just in general, I think the market is finally opening up to um, this this stability in the government in the coming months and you know let we'll have to wait and see you know if if the market will continue to hold up but um this yesterday i was up 1.84 percent almost 97 dollars this past week last week was kind of dipping a little so i only returned 0.98 percent 52 dollars and then past one month, almost 7% to $990. And then all 11.62% and then up uh, $368. So, and I have a cash balance of $200. I just made this transfer um, a couple days ago and I'm just waiting to see you know, when I can use this money or whether I should build up a cash position. Um, it, you know, This is something I am trying to get better at, but you know, in the past, I tend to just invest immediately whenever I, ha when I bring cash into this portfolio. But I think moving forward, 
I want to have a cash position of at least 10% so that when the market takes a quick turn, um, I can have some dry powder ready on the sidelines, but you know, I'm still waiting to see if there are individual stocks that might take a dip. Um, but right now everything, although all the stocks are generally, you know, going up with all the good news in the market, a lot to just wait and see. And another thing that I just, you know, want to talk out loud is um, M1 Plus. I got another email from them saying that they're doing another promotion. Um, oh, yeah, so here he basically is letting me upgrade for the first year for $50 instead of, I think, normally it's $125 a month. But, um, you know, comment down below if, if you guys use M1 Plus because I'm not sure if, um, it's worth getting at this point. Um, you know, they say that their main draws or benefits is that a second afternoon trade window is available. You earn 1% APY and 1% cash back if you use their uh, spend card in their checkings account, I believe. And then you can borrow a uh, margin at uh, 2%. And for me personally, I think the only benefit that I would personally use is the borrowing at a two percent um for a line of credit and you know that's something i have considered in the past but since i'm not at the ten thousand dollars that they require as a minimum i haven't really um really been thinking about that right now but you know maybe i'll do more research online and and see if i take on take up on their offer so that i can borrow at you know a two percent uh, rate for the future but you know i'll come up with come out with a video specifically talking about, you know, why I think that that might be a great idea. So the first one is O Realty. I discussed this in a previous video, but Realty Income is a REIT with monthly dividends with over 6,500 real estate properties owned under long-term lease agreements with commercial tenants. Um, it's been in operation for 51 years and has increased its dividend for 108 times since they became public in 1994. And, and if you see from the dividend scorecard, they're currently yielding 4.54% annual payout, uh, $2.81 or about 23 cents a month. And their five-year dividend growth rate is about 4%, which is um, typical of a REIT of this size and history. Um, and if you switch on over to dividend yield, uh, it's loading. You can see that um, in the, within the past five years, it's currently right around the middle of where the yield has been. Um, it's gone as low as 3.3-ish uh, to Right in the beginning of the crash, market crash, we were hitting almost 6%. It did cross the 6%, and right now it's back down to about 4.5. And then if you switch on over to dividend yield, um, this just tells you that um, what your yield would have been if you bought it at a particular time in the past. So if you just look back five years, if you had bought this on 11-24-2015, then you're your that investment would be yielding 5.68%. Next up, we have NNN, another REIT that invests in high quality retail properties subject to long-term leases. Um, for them, they're a little bit smaller than own Realty, but they still own 3,114 properties in 48 uh, states. And um, their leasable area of 32 million square feet dividend. If here you can see that they're yielding a little bit higher, 5.17% annual payout of $2.08. They pay quarterly, so it's about $0.52 cents every quarter. Um, their five-year dividend growth rate is right around also 4%, and they've been paying their, uh, growing their dividend, sorry, for 30 years. And then if we hop on over to dividend yield, it seems to lag a little bit, but um. You can see in the past five years, it's actually, even though the yield has gone down a little bit since the spring, even though at 5.17, it's still a lot higher than 
where it has been within the past five years. Um, and then for yield on cost, if you had owned it five years ago, you'd actually be yielding about 5.43%. Next up, we have Johnson & Johnson. Um, Johnson & Johnson is a well-known company with um, various products in the healthcare field. Um, you know, there are many products in the consumer, ph pharmaceutical and medical devices. Um, they hold a number of brands that we all come to know, love and know, like Listerine, Avino, Neutrogena, Benadryl, Zyrtec, Tylenol, Neosporin, and Band-Aid. And then they also hold a number of pharmaceutical um, drugs in the immunology, infectious diseases, neuroscience, oncology, pulmonary, hypertension, et cetera. Um, and you can see that um, they're currently yielding 2.81%. Um, their five-year growth rate is at 6.32%, and they've been growing their dividend for 58 years. That's almost as old as my parents. Um, every quarter, they pay about a dollar and a cent. Let's see, loading, loading. And you can see that for the past five years, it's about in the middle of where it has yielded, you know, it's yielded as high as over 3% to as low as, you know, two and a quarter back in January 2018. So in, in general, it's about in the middle. And, you know, the yield on cost for five years, if you had bought it five years ago, you'd actually be yielding almost 4% today. Next up is a little bit more of a controversial topic. It gets a lot of attention online by uh, analysts. But we have AT&T. Uh, they operate for segments communication, Warner Media, Latin America, and Xander. They offer wireless, wire, uh, wireline telecom, video broadband internet services, um, a whole bunch of entertainment streaming services. They own Warner Media, which produces WB, and they also hold uh, DC Comics. They have Direct TV and Satellite TV Sky Brands um, overseas, and they have Xander, which provides digital and video advertising services. And their dividend, you know, for a primarily income seeking investor is is really high you know right now they're yielding about 7.12 percent um, their annual payout is about two dollars and eight cents but they're also expected to increase their dividend um, in December um, which will probably be about two percent or so and um, their five-year growth rate it's about two percent for the past few years they've just like raised their dividend um, payout by a penny per quarter, so it comes out to about 2%. And then they've been growing their dividend for at least 20 years. You can see that, you know, even for AT&T, their past five years, they're towards the all-time high for their yield, um, even before the, the virus. Uh, you know, every once in a while, it would reach over 7%. Otherwise, it got down to as low as 4%. 4.4% back in 2016. And then on a yield and cost, um, in the past five years, if you had bought it five years ago, you'd actually be yielding a little bit less at 6.23%, just because you know the, the share price itself has kind of just been up and down within a, a range. So what a lot of investors would do who really want the income of AT&T is that, um, when the share prices um, go lower, making the yield higher, they just add on to their position then, and then they hold on when when the share price of AT and T is at the top, and you can see it kind of just goes up and down and up and down, not really breaking out, but also not necessarily crashing. But for me, I, I their their dividend is well covered by their cash flow and. Um, I, I do think they have the ability to turn around um, their debt. You know, they acquired 
they took on so much debt when they um, took over DirecTV as well as Time Warner. But just within the past two years, they already paid down uh, $30 billion in long-term debt. And I have no questions that they will be able to um, get that debt coverage ratio down to a more manageable level. But um, yeah, you know, I, and then lastly, we have LOW Lowe's. Uh, Lowe's company operates as a home improvement retailer in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Um, as of this year, they operate 1,977 home improvement and hardware stores. And along with Home Depot, they are basically a duopoly in the home improvement um, uh, market. And, you know, just as a sideline, you know, I, my wife and I, we recently uh, bought a house. And uh, when we were moving in, we were doing a lot of um, home renovation projects, such as um, painting the entire um, interior paint, um, just replacing all the, you know, the light switch covers, and then, and then just getting a lot of other tools that we need for the maintenance of the house. And literally, um, during that couple week process, I went to the local Lowe's, you know, three or four times a week just because I forgot something and then I have to go back and et cetera and et cetera. But um, this is what I consider a higher growth company. Um, you know, it's here, it's under that low yielding. So it's definitely a longer uh, wait and see approach because they're currently only yielding a, a 1.55%. Um, the annual payout is $2.40 in each quarter dividend you make about 60 cents but one good thing that i did not touch on the other four picks is that their payout ratio which is dividends that they pay out of their earnings it's only 28 percent, which is really low and what's even crazier and their five-year growth rate is over 20 percent you know that that's insane to me and then i think the craziest thing is that they've been growing their dividend for 57 years so it just tells me that as they kind of accumulated with the times, they just adapt, you know, and now they're, you know, adapting to e-commerce and the home improvement market. So they made it, they're making it really easy for us to just go on their website and place an order or pick up on, a, you know, on a tool or you know, hardware product or they're making it really easy for delivery. And then they're also combining um, services in-house where you can actually um, use one of their contracted, uh, subcontracted contractor to do any sort of home improvement project through Lowe's and then that money gets retained by the company, which I think is a really great idea because we are actually looking at possibly hiring Lowe's to you know, paint our interior. <laughs> but, um, you can see that within the past five years, they're actually yielding lower than what is typical, just because um, the sector uh, recovered a lot and, and more in just this past year as people stayed home. Um, they spent more money on home improvement projects and sales have just gone up so much this year. But, you know, if you hold lows for five years you know you can see that the yield is already double at 3.1 percent and for this one let's go even further if you had owned a stock 10 years ago so if you had owned it on november 24th 2010 you had an initial investment to be yielding 10.6 percent for a company that continues to grow its dividend you know 20 percent a year so, you know, that really is compounding interest at its finest. And that's a wrap. Thank you everyone for um, watching this video for the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe, hit the like button and share this video with everyone. Bye.